City Field. Deep left center field. Taylor back near the wall. It's out of here. Flores ends it with a home run. The trade that wasn't made might be the biggest hit for the Mets all season. Wilmer Flores night at City Field comes to a fitting close, and the Mets win it two to one in twelve. The New York Mets play the Washington Nationals. I have a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you tonight at a loud City Field as the Mets play the middle game of their series against the Nationals. Last night, a storybook finish for the Mets as Wilmer Flores, who was nearly traded two nights before, wound up the hero. Today, the Mets welcome a newcomer, Ioannis Cespedes, one of the biggest midseason acquisitions the Mets have ever made in a franchise that has brought in Don Clendenin. Keith Hernandez, Mike Piazza has midseason additions. Probably no more needed piece than Cespedes in this particular Mets season. Well, a right-handed power bat. He brings 18 home runs uh, to the Metropolitans, eight in the month of July. So they also got a red-hot hitter. And I think more importantly, you've got the right-handed bat to go in between Murphy and Duda, which will be tonight. Also, he is a terrific outfielder, hitting 293 this year at Detroit. Drove in 100 runs last year also. He's a big bat. Every the three seasons he's played, he's hit 20-plus home runs. He wants to play and likes to play center field. So I think down the road, Gary, we're going to see a lot of him in center field. Cespedes will be in left field tonight. He'll be batting third for the Mets in support of Jacob deGrom, who has just been marvelous for the Mets. He goes for his 11th win tonight. Well, you got to say, basically, that he's the ace of this staff. He's pitched so wonderfully. This is his 20th start. He's only had four bad starts in the season. Uh, three out of the four decisions have been wins in his last five Five starts. He has just been terrific, most reliable. What a season he is having! An All Star, one and two in three, st four starts against Washington this year. And as he did a week and a half ago, he'll match up against rookie right-hander Joe Ross, the younger brother of Tyson, whom the Mets saw earlier this week. Well, he started the season in Double A, a non-roster player. Went, for, went to Triple A, was five and three uh, in, in 14 starts in the minors. He is, uh, I guess, Tyson. Ross Light. He got a big slider sinker. Doesn't walk anybody. Only three walks so far in his five starts. Puts the ball in play. Uh, he's never faced the Mets. Always oh, faced the Mets. Oh, excuse me. And pitched a very good game. Got a loss. The bullpen kind of lost it for him. And he's looking to get on the even side here. This is a big game for a 22 year old to pitch. Mets with their win last night. Pulled within two games of the first place Nationals in the National League East. They'll try and make it two for two in the series tonight with the Grom on the mound. All the action coming your way on SNY.
at Land Rover above and beyond. By Bob's Discount Furniture, home of the famous Bob Opedic Memory Foam Mattress, world famous. By DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the New York Mets. By Heineken, open your world. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com for a free rate quote. Follow the Mets wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat, it's up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stack cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Tonight's Twisted But True Fact is brought to you by Twisted Tea, the hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea. In 2013, Ioannis Cespedes came to City Field, won the Home Run Derby without being on the All-Star team. He would then win the Home Run Derby again last year. That's twisted but true, Gary. Doesn't sound so twisted, but it is true. We promise you that. What's also true is that Ioannis Cespedes is about to make his Mets debut. Mets and Nats. First pitch is coming right up. To you by State Farm today. State Farm agent of the game is John Garfinkel of Brooklyn. Contact John at johngarfinkel.com. By Bedgear, performance betting of the New York Mets. Sleep cool like your favorite player. Bedgear.com. Sleep fuels everything. And by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealers on the web at mbusa.com. 20th start of the year for Jacob DeGrom, who's been on an absolute roll. Last 12 starts, pitching to a 1.37 ERA. He's been almost impossible to score against. And he'll try and keep that roll going tonight against this Washington Nationals lineup. And other than Denard Spano, all their players are back. Wilson Ramos, who didn't start last night with Jose Lobaton catching. He's been a Met killer. He'll hit seven tonight. And the Nats try and... Get it revved up. There's seven games over 500, just two games in front of the Mets. And there's the Jeep numbers for Jacob DeGrom, and they are absolutely outstanding. The walks are incredible. Whip under under one, off awesome. What more can you say? Pitched that first series in Washington, pitched a good game and lost. 
came back home and pitched early and got beat up pretty good. And in the third start, he got the W in Washington. So the perfect guy after our opening series win to have on the mound for you. Anthony Rondon getting set to lead things off for the Nats. And Alexis Metropolitan defense and who goes out in left field. The new guy in town, Cespedes, who brings so much power and defense. Kelly Johnson in right field. Murphy, Duda, Flores back in the lineup at the game winner last night. And Darno behind the plate. Nets made the player move today to activate Cespedes. They said Michael Conforto down to Triple A to make room. Have been some question about whether they might deal Kirk Newenheis, who's had a pinched nerve in his neck, but Newenheis is okay, so Conforto goes down, and the Mets welcome Cespedes. Anthony Rendon leads off two for five last night. DeGrom's first pitch of the night is in at the knees for a strike, and we're underway. Right away, pouring a fastball in there. Kelly Johnson's fourth career start in right field. And for Curtis Granderson, only his second start this season in center field. He had 11 last year. So it's not the best defensive outfield alignment for the Mets, but I think it might change in the coming days. I was a bit surprised with the starting lineup a little bit here, but uh, I thought Lagaris might play center field with the additional bat, but he's going to go with the left hander, the extra left hander right there in Johnson. Rock just missed the outside corner, two and one. Right hand hitters this season are hitting 176 against DeGrom. The lefties don't have too much of a shot either, just 215. That's how good he's been. You now Escobar on deck, then Bryce Harper. Mm. And DeGrom gets it in for a strike, two and two. And that's his bread and butter, and it was Harvey's last night. By the way, Harvey, Matt Harvey threw a brilliant ball game. Shame he couldn't get a W. But they both can paint the outside corner, and so can Syndergaard. Syndergaard so pitch tomorrow night in the final game of the series. 2 2 to Rendon. And he flares one foul. Rendon's played half a dozen games since coming back from the disabled list. He was out with a quad injury. And you see the Browns' numbers against the righties this year. Historically low. Be a nice strato card. <laughs> Pretty good in real life, too. <laughs> and Harvey last night was wonderful for seven and two thirds innings. Lifts one foul. Rendon five for 21 since returning from the disabled list. It was Gio Gonzalez who ran into control problems as he often does and lasted just four and two thirds. Not a good start. Put a lot of pressure on the Washington bullpen last night. We heard a lot after the game last night about player utilization. Mentioned Newenheis wasn't available for the Mets. We had talked during the game about how we were surprised Terry hadn't put him in for defense. And Matt Williams had some limitations with his bullpen last night. Rendon fouls it back. Both Drew Storen and Casey Jansen were not available to Williams last night, which was one of the reasons that Felipe Rivero got the third inning of relief and gave up the game winning home run to Flores. And Rivero threw great. He just threw right into Wilmer's happy area. Eighth pitch of this opening at bat for Rendon. Takes the fastball high. All fastballs from the ground. Three and two. Well, we saw a lot of professional at bats last night out of this Washington lineup. They really made Harvey work. Good two strike hitting last night. Just really oh, tremendous pitching out of Harvey. Rendon cracks it to deep center field. Granderson racing back near the warning track. He runs it down. Now, uh, wouldn't you know it? Only his second start in center field this year, and Granderson has a difficult play to make right out of the box, and he makes it well. Well, I thought that ball, I thought that ball was hit. There's a Granderson top of your screen of the jump. Speed's a wonderful thing, is it not? So with help from his occasional center fielder, DeGrom wins a nine-pitch battle with Rendon. Not happy with the pitch, too much plate. So one out now, you know, Escobar was one for five last night and drove in the tying run in the eighth inning against Matt Harvey. Escobar's seventh in the National League with that 312 batting average. And he takes a slider for a strike. If you're going to get to Grom, you usually have to get him early. 
Jacobs first in the ERA this year is 4.26 and of the nine home runs he's given up this season five have come in the first inning. Well, it's like all top notch pitchers uh, you don't want them to get their rhythm. Well, you see that finger cover on the glove of the Grom. Lately though even the first inning has been no sweat for DeGrom. He hasn't given up a first inning hit in any of his last six starts. That finger guard right there is a lot of pitchers tip their pitches. They stick out their finger on a breaking ball. Loop the other way and there's a base hit for Escobar. So the Nats have a one out base runner. And Bryce Harper coming up. It's not a bad pitch. Good little cutter away, but it stayed flat, and a hitter can track a flat breaking ball. Good hitting Escobar, just having himself a really nice season. So one out and one out, and now Bryce Harper, who had himself a miserable night last night, went 0 for 5, and then his fifth at bat in the 11th inning, called out on strikes, got in the face of Jerry Meals, was ejected, and really put his team in a bad way as a result. Harper, though, having a magnificent season. And he takes away from ball one. There was a call third strike. And we had the overhead, and it was outside. And Mills did not have a good night behind the plate last night. And once you swear, it's over. They can run you. And he pulls one in the right field to base it for Harper. Escobar turning second. He'll go on to third as Johnson's throw comes into second. And so the Nats have a threat going in the first inning. First and third and one out. So Harper picks up his first hit in the series. So you see set up double play depth here. A little bit tight. Flores at second. He didn't have a chance for that ball. Hit too hard and good aggressive base running. Kelly Johnson not used to playing the outfield. His arms not can't expect him to have a strong arm. Well, he's played a lot of left field, not much right field. That's what he's being asked to do tonight. So an early crisis for DeGrom. He gave up a long fly ball to Rendon for the first down. Now back to back base hits to Escobar and Harper. Ryan Zimmerman hitting cleanup tonight after going 0 for 4 last night. Like Rendon, Zimmerman just recently back from a long stint on the Sable list with plantar fasciitis. This is just his fifth game since returning. Lines one to center field. Granderson coming on to grab it. Escobar didn't get back to tag in time, and he will not be able to score. Escobar's first move was toward home plate, and by the time Granderson caught it, Escobar was still moving back to the bag. No chance to tag. Two out. Well, not good base running. Why? It's a line drive, a base hit. You can walk home. That's just not knowing where your outfielder is. It's a poor read. And by the way, Granderson had a nice throw there. I don't think he would have had a chance to score. And look at that haircut. Mm. Well, there was a time when center field was Curtis Granderson's everyday position. It's been a long time since that's been the case, but he's been very involved in this first inning. And now DeGrom, not fooling anybody right now, has a chance to get through the inning unscathed. Jason Worth won for five last night. This is just his fifth game since coming back. From a broken wrist. Worth had a been really a tremendous at bat late in the game against Tyler Clippard. 13 14 pitch at bat, which Clippard finally struck him out. On another pitch that was borderline. Escobar at third, Harper at first, and two out. And Worth takes a slider outside, two and out. So every ball was hit hard. This inning, the weakest hit was Escobar's base soft liner to right field. Two outs were solidly struck, and Harper hit it hard. So DeGrom trying to survive this first inning behind 2 0 on Worth, and he gets the outside corner with a fastball 2 and 1. The Met defense is Flores up the middle. They're giving a big hole in that right side. To Worth, who I don't quite understand it because Worth can go that way. And Worth foul tips the fastball as DeGrom ran it in on him, two and two. Wanted it away, missed on the other side of the plate. Well, it has. 
hasn't been the easiest first inning for Jacob DeGrom, but now he's got a chance to get through it. Two two. Too high, 98, hardest pitch he's thrown in the inning. Well, the fans are into this one. They are excited with the moves that have been made and capped with the trade for Cespedes. Desmond would be next. Duda will play behind Harper, who will be in motion now with three and two and two out. Just got a piece of it. Good location by DeGrom. This is the way that at bat went last night against Clippard in that eighth inning. Making the drum work. 22 pitches deep and at least one more to throw. 3 2 to Worth. Outside ball four. Borderline pitch. Worth got the call and the bases are loaded. I tell you what, I bet you it's a ball. Worth has a good eye. And it's a gutty pitch to take, but it did miss. Jerry Meals last night, you're caught your rung up. Got a young umpire behind the plate tonight, Jordan Baker. Calling the balls and strikes. Dan Worth then going to pay a first inning visit to Jacob DeGrom. Two singles and a walk have filled the bases with two outs, and a crucial juncture in this ball game comes very early with DeGrom set to face Ian Desmond. Well, we mentioned that when he's had difficulties, it's often been in the first. You look at the umpiring quartet. Jerry Mills at third base is the crew chief. So now it's Desmond who came into the series on a hot streak that started against the Mets last week. But he was 0 for 4 last night against Harvey and ultimately Carlos Torres who struck him out in the 12th inning. Bases loaded two out. Desmond hitting just 215 for the year. And DeGrom gets ahead of him with an up and in fastball. Uh, they came right up and in on him there. This is a guy that is in a walk year. Turned down a whole lot of money from Washington and having a terrible year. Three straight silver slugger at shortstop on the National League team and just having a off year. 118 strikeouts, third most in the league. He hits one toward the middle and Tejada can't reach it. It's a base hit. Escobar is in. Harper right behind him. Ian Desmond with a two run single puts the Nats up 2 0 against DeGrom in the opening inning. Broken bat. C and I dog as we used to call it. Sorry. Those are baseball terms. I can't shake them. This just saws him all. Didn't get it inside enough, Gary. Ran in, but not in enough. And you see Tejada playing straight up, just can't get to it. Big two out hit, Gary. So a rocky start for Jacob DeGrom. Three hits and a walk have produced two runs in the opening inning. And now the Met killer Wilson Ramos will step in with two out and two on. Ramos who sat last night has been struggling lately. But he's a 337 lifetime hitter against Mets pitching. Including three for eight against DeGrom. Oh boy. And he jams him and he fouls it off. That's not much of a chance on that one. That's one you want to lay off I think. Ramos a very aggressive hitter. We've seen that over the years. Met killer. Just one for 18 on the Nats current road trip. It's got Worth at second, Desmond at first with two down, two runs home for the Nats. And DeGrom laboring a little bit now. I just love the poise of this young staff, and uh, by young I mean young in experience. DeGrom is 27, but if he's not what you'd call a seasoned veteran, but they all behave on the mound as if they've been in the league 10 years. Change up from DeGrom. And he gets ahead on Ronald's win too. Beautiful. Look at the sink. 
that's not fair. So he's had to dip a little further into the arsenal in this first inning than he's accustomed to. One and two to Ramos. Two and two. Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Slugging percentage against the Mets active players. He got stars surrounding Wilson Ramos, who has just had great numbers against the Mets from the day he came to the National League from Minnesota. Good eye. I'm telling you, I am impressed with this Washington lineup as far as their two strike hitting and their knowledge of the strike zone. There's Matt Williams. Third full count of this opening inning for DeGrom. He's already 30 pitches deep. Worth and Desmond will be running. Michael Taylor on deck. 3 2 to Ramos. Little number. And DeGrom finally gets through the inning. But a fast start for the Washington Nationals. Ian Desmond with the big two out hits. Mets come to bat with Uena Cespedes getting his first plate appearance. This goes immediately into the three hole in between Daniel Murphy and Lucas Duda. Kelly Johnson getting a start in right field. Ruben Tejada goes down to the nine spot as DeGrom bats eighth. Travis Darno, his second game back from the DL. 22 year old Joe Ross. You see his Toyota numbers. Look at the walks to those innings pitch. He's a strike thrower and a strikeout artist. Nice whip. This is his uh, fourth. He'd say he's coming off of four straight starts. Quality starts. Cespedes is having a chat with Mr. Long. Curtis Granderson will lead things off. Granderson has gotten on base 15 straight games, and he takes a strike on the inside from Ross. Nothing and one. Curtis at 254 for the year, 349 on base percentage. Stealthily having himself a nice season. Ross quickly ahead of Moa two. No sense waiting around against Joe Ross. No. In the modern era since 1900, there's never been a pitcher through his first five starts before Joe Ross, who had 30 plus strikeouts and only three walks in his first five major league starts. Three walks, 34 strikeouts. Well, he's he just up. missed with that fastball one and two. He's a sinker ball pitcher, and he's been up with his first two pitches. There you go, right there. And. When you're up in a sinker ball pitcher, that ball tends to flatten out. Curtis has reached base in 15 straight wagos. 
There's a sinker where you want it downstairs. Sinking past Wilson Ramos. I kind of like the camo uh, shin protectors and the chest protector on the catcher. Instead of having the color bright red, it's, I like that look. I like that look. Who cares? Up and in the Granderson on a full count. It was only three days ago that the Mets faced Joe Ross's older brother Tyson, who's six years older. And Tyson did not have good control in that game. He walked four and five innings, but allowed just to run on two hits and wound up with a win. Granderson pulls one right at the second baseman Rendon. And that's the first down. Yeah, we'll take a look at your course light. Washington National. First place Washington National. Defense. Michael Taylor in center field. Denard Spann on the disabled list. Two all stars on the corner outfield positions. Ian Desmond, of course, we've talked about. Ryan Zimmerman just put back in the lineup. First year really playing every day. At first base and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. See what the guy he replaced did last night. LaRoche. Yep. Daniel Murphy takes a strike. Adam LaRoche pitched a 1 2 3 inning. And you remember his dad, Dave LaRoche, he threw a la lob. Well, so did Adam. He threw it as slow as 50 miles an hour. And 1 2 3 inning. Wow. Breaking ball in for a strike. Twice that's got. Gripped by the Yankees 13 to 6, so it gave LaRoche a chance to take them out. LaRoche is not having a terrific season, is he? No. You never know with him, though. He can go on a tear the last two months. One and two to Murphy. Murph won for five last night, getting a 270 for the year. And Yuena Cespedes is parked on deck. This crowd has been roaring ever since he walked into the ballpark today. And imagine what the reaction will be when it comes to the plate. He's up. He's geared up. This is a young man here, 22 years of age. This team has lost the first game of a very important three game series. We're in the month of August now, folks. This is it. This is down a stretch run here. They're hanging on to a two game lead. It's a tough spot for a young man. He's in the spot of. Steven Strasburg in the Nats rotation. One, two, and Murphy chases the slider in the dirt for strike three. So two out and nobody on as Cespedes makes his way to the plate. During the open tonight, the Mets have had some significant mid-season pickups. Going back to Don Clendenin in 69, Keith in 83, Mike Piazza in 98. But of all those guys, nobody has arrived with more home runs in season than Cespedes does. 18 home runs. And uh, eight in the month of July, as we said in the open. He's a red hot hitter. Good slider right there. 87 strikeouts in 403 at bats. Okay, he's going to strike out around 120 up plus times. He's on a pace for 90 plus RBIs, around 27 home runs. 1 1 from Ross. And again, the slider has him fishing. 1 and 2. And I don't care who you are, what kind of star you are. When you're on a first game on a new team, particularly at home, in front of the new fans, your new home fans. You're going to be a little nervous. And in a new league, too. Yep. Never played in the National League before. His fourth big league team. Started out with the A's. Had a huge rookie season in 2012. The A's dealt him to the Red Sox last year and then to the Tigers this season. And he has that unusual contract where he has to be released at the end of this year, so he becomes a free agent, even though he will only have four years in the big league. One two coming. And Sussman has got a piece of that slider to stay alive. Well, he keeps flailing at that slow, low and away slider, and Ross, to his credit, it's like a computer just spitting out the printout. He just keeps putting it there. 
Ross has thrown his slider 35% of the time this year and clearly has studied the scouting report on Cespedes. Rounded to short. Desmond gets in front of it, so he finally threw him a fastball. Cespedes grounds on his first Mets at bat, and Ross handed the lead, has himself a 1 2 3 first inning. Michael Taylor leads off the second inning and fouls back Jacob DeGrom's first offering. He had a rough night last night, Gary. 0 for 5. Golden Sombrero. Four strikeouts. Ouch. You don't want those days. Candelaria gave me an 0 for 4 one time in my career in Pittsburgh. Uh, four punch outs. Well, Taylor has struck out a lot, 98 times this year, but has done a nice job filling in for Denard Spann. The lone regular player for the Nats who remains on the sidelines. They don't know when they're going to get Span back. They have a pretty good idea when they're going to get Steven Strasburg back after one more rehab start. And then they will be close to hold. Taylor down on strikes. That's the first of the night for Jacob DeGrom. Wow, five strikeouts. Woo. Goodness. A lot of plate upstairs. Swung right through it. That'll. There you go. Get always early in the year. Always late in the season. Mm -hmm. Get that reflection. That always reminds the front offices over there, folks, behind right center field. Always remember one of my favorite baseball movies, The Natural, was the front office with the, the general manager or the owner. I think it was, was kind of like a Branch Ricky type character. Ross Grounds went for Tejada and quickly DeGrom has two outs. During tonight's game, you can get interactive with SNY Game Day on SNY.TV featuring pitch by pitch coverage, player cards, and in depth stats. Check out SNY Game Day on SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. With DeGrom being a quick inning after a 31 pitch slog in the first, faces Anthony Rendon with two out and nobody on. Rendon taking his time, giving his pitcher a breather, as he should. Rendon had a nine pitch at bat to start the game. Kind of set the tone for that first inning. Had a long fly ball to center that Granderson ran down. Well, Rom has been on point lately. You mentioned the last 12 starts, 1.37 ERA. But how about Clayton Kershaw? 
eight scoreless innings today against the Angels. He's now gone 37 straight innings without allowing a run. He's starting to approach the streak that Grinky had broken against the Mets. Same pitching staff, two great pitchers. Angels are floundering, aren't they? They got swept by the Astros. Lost eight of their last nine now. That's on the corner. Two and two to run down. It was the first time in that game today with Kershaw facing Mike Trout that the two reigning MVPs, pitcher versus batter, had faced each other. Rendon goes down, side retired. One, two, three for DeGrom with a couple of strikeouts. That's more like it. Two nothing Nats in the second. Field advantage, Lucas Duda. 18 home runs this year. 15 of the 18 have come at City Field. Well, Lucas has hit six home runs in the last six days. Eight home runs the month of July. That was second in the National League. He had the three home run game on Wednesday night. Came off the bench last night. Fouled out and was only at bat. Due to Flores and Johnson for the Mets in the second against Joe Ross, who retired the side in order in the first. Four left handers in the lineup, including DeGrom. Ross, 292 against left handers this year, 187 against right handers. There's the hero. Folk hero. Yes, sir. I mean, anytime someone hits a walk off home run, it's a big deal. But the circumstances yes. are so charged for Wilmer Flores over the last 72 hours. It just made it yep. an event to remember. Public hero number one. <laughs> two and two to do that. Well, Ross right now is hasn't getting getting a lot of sync. His ball's just running flat away. And he's not an overpowering pitcher. He's only given up one home run over his first five starts. So he hasn't walked people. He hasn't allowed the ball to be head of the ballpark. Runs a full count to do to his second full count in the first four batters. Ross 
Ross was in the Padres organization with his brother until last winter when he came in a three way deal that involved the Padres and the Rays. 3 2 coming, and the breaking ball misses for ball four. So Ross, who rarely walks anybody, walks due to the lead that walked in the second. And now here's Flores. Tremendous ovation for Wilmer Flores as he comes to the plate. They're chanting Wilmer Flores. Folk hero indeed. Saw Wilmer today and asked him who he's heard from in the wake of all these events that have transpired since Wednesday. And I stopped by Ramos. He said he, he's got texts from tons of people, and most of them he, he hasn't called back. He said mostly his, his family has just been tremendously supportive. But he said he did get a text from Eduardo Alfonso, who he's nice. very close to, and he's been a big influence on Wilmer's career. Very nice. Generous strike call. Two and one. Ross is going to get in trouble if he keeps it up above the belt. Belt enough. He's going to get in big trouble. Oh, is that a strike? That was not a strike. But it's. Two and one to Flores. And Lola lays off the slider and Ross falls behind three and one. Boy, you'd like to set Lucas Duda free, but he just can't run Duda. And there's Kelly Johnson in the on deck circle. Duda doesn't run well enough. I think they're going to anchor him at first base. But you could. Ross all of a sudden having trouble throwing strikes. 3 1 coming to Flores. And he hits one in the air to deep left field. Back goes Horace to the warning track. At the wall. Is there to make the catch right in front of the orange line. <laughs> Wilmer didn't miss by much. And he gets another ovation as he heads to the dugout. Upstairs pitch right down the pipe. I thought he got it. Look at Worth. Doesn't matter where what outfield position Worth plays. He's just really a terrific defender. It's yeah. he got the fat of it. He just got under a little bit too much. Now Kelly Johnson with one out and one on takes a fastball for a strike. Another pitch up, Gary. Oh my word. Johnson playing his sixth game with the Mets, two for 14 with a home run since arriving. Very interesting outfield positioning. I remember Johnson as being a pull hitter, but in the outfield, look at the left fielder, Worth, hugging the line. Look at Harper, he's basically hugging the line and dead pretty much straight away in center. Huge gaps for Johnson. I get the impression that Bryce Harper doesn't move much. Oh, from that spot in right field. Strawberry fields? Mm -hmm. Harper's haven. No offense, Daryl. I used to drive Daryl nuts to Carver. Does he ever? He's too deep. He's playing too deep. <laughs> Look, the grass is brown. He never moves. <laughs> Ross ahead on Johnson 0 2. And Kelly takes the slider in the dirt. Another nice stop by Ramos. <laughs> Daryl would come in mumbling and going, I jog on my carver and I go, what? But he's getting on me. I go, Daryl, come on. Just don't listen to what, what's being set up here. We got a game to play. Well, we saw last night at one point Ian Desmond waving Harper, trying yes. to get him to play in a different spot. And Harper didn't move an inch. Didn't move. And Desmond just looked in the dugout and shrugged. 
One two coming. Oh. Johnson hits it out to left and Worth is right there. Right down the middle. Staggered Worth for a moment. Boy I'll tell you what Ross is. Flirting with danger he's just throwing balls up in the strike zone. That wasn't very pretty from Worth right there. This is right down the pipe and up. Oh my goodness. Well, so far he's gotten away with it. Two out due to at first, and now here's Travis Darno made his return from the disabled list last night after missing six weeks with an elbow injury. Went 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. Plan is for Darno to play two games and then get a game off and ease his way back in. One of the reasons why the Mets decided to keep Kevin Plowecki here rather than send him back to Triple A to play every day, because at least initially Travis isn't going to play more than. Four, maybe five games a week. Got to figure out a way to keep Travis on the field. Enormous potential. I love his swing. I love his energy. Got a chance to have a fine career. So Plowecki will probably catch Syndergaard tomorrow night. Interesting, Dave Racanelli. Uh, down in the dugout, he's usually out in the bullpen. Well, needs to warm up quite yet. Rack was right next to Pawlucki, top stepping it. There he is. Rack's been here how long? Geez, forever. Still looks as young as the day he got here. One, two, count. And Darno Browns went down to third. Escobar plays the short way. And they get the force to end the inning. A lead off walk. Mets unable to capitalize. After two, two nothing Nats. State Audi dealers and the uncompromised Audi A3 sedan. Jacob DeGrom had a rough first inning. Gave up two runs on three hits through 31 pitches, second most he's thrown in any inning this season. Yudel Escobar got it going for the Nats with a soft single to right field, later scored the first Nationals run. Slider away. Let's see if DeGrom changes up on him. Second time through the order. Trying to bunt, he pops it foul. Well beyond the reach of Darno and back in the crowd. You know, something I never realized in my playing days, because I was never really wasn't a pitcher, was when Ronnie's learned so much from Ronnie. You have a usually when you have a bad first inning, you go through most of the order. That second inning you come back, you got the bottom of the order. That's the inning to collect yourself, find your rhythm, have an easy inning. 
but now it's the next inning. Now he's got to go through the teeth of the order. Escobar, Harper, and Zimmerman up for the Nats in the third. Escobar has really been a lifesaver for the Nats this year with all the people yeah. that they had hurt. He was brought here to be the second baseman, but with the injury to Rendon to start the season, he volunteered to take over at third and did such a great job that he stayed there with Rendon's return. They got him from Oakland in the offseason, correct? Got him for Tyler Clipper. That was the deal that sent Clipper That's to right. the A's. Of course, Clipper now a Met. Tyler had to work awfully hard last night. Third ball from DeGrom bouncing away. A little bit of a struggle for uh, Jacob early here. Trying to find, get his sights squared up. Lined up, excuse me. Escobar broke his bat as he fouled that off. Squared up, is that like the hitting or hitting, hitting you know, Wouldn't work for pitching. Hitting the ball on the side. Lined up would be more in the corners. You'd line up the corners and the knees, horizontal, vertical. Kind of like looking through the side of a rifle. Well, I wouldn't you go line that up, far. You line up your prey with the the crosshair. Right, sniper. That wouldn't be squaring up so <laughs> well, Generally, these days, the bat boy will come out and bring the new bat to the hitter, but Escobar made the long trek back to the dugout to get new one, left to Grom waiting. That was one of the things they did to speed the game up, if you recall. Have to have the extra bat in the on deck circle with the bat boy. That's been it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's kind of stupid, I think. Got the bat boy talking to himself now. Well, DeGrom has had to work awfully yes. hard for every out. Absolutely. This is this lineup grinds you already. Next pitch 50. They really grind to make the pitcher grind. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat to Escobar with Harper on deck. This is away in a full count. He looks frustrated. He does. Right He's, he hasn't found himself. It's unusual to see him, but very composed. But you can tell he's a bit agitated here about not being able to find it. It's a big game. Rounded toward the hole, and Escobar gets it through for a base hit. Again on the slider. This time he pulled it. And the Nats have their fourth hit. Escobar is two for two. Not just a little hanger right there. He got it down, but it's not much break here. So So now Harper who pulled one through the hole on the right his first time up. First ball, fastball hitting two. Hits one after the first pitch. Mentioned Harper's ejection last night. Did you see his comments after the? Oh, game? I did. I saw the one comment that he was helping his team. That's what he said. He said I was doing it for my teammates because talking about Jerry Meals, he was bad all night. Okay. Well, he didn't really help his team. And his manager, Matt Williams, said repeatedly after the game, he's got to keep himself in the game. Yep. You got to be aware of what's going on around you. Uh, Game that was going extra innings, bench depleted. You're an all star player. I... Anyway, it didn't have an impact on the game, but it forced Dan Ugla, who had never played first base in his life, to play first base the last two innings and moved Ryan Zimmerman as a bad foot out to left field. And DeGrom sells one outside. It's two and one. See him motioning and yes. trying to figure it out. Very interesting to watch this, and there's uh, Grandpa right there. Well, remember he had that slump early in the season where he was overstriding, and they they fixed that between starts, and that's when he went on a tear that he's been on. Harper pops it up, and Duda 
into foul ground to grab it. Why not? So the question is if if his mechanics are off, does he have the ability to correct himself mid-game? Oh, I think at this point he's he can. Just there's certain extremes, right? Certain certain levels of not having it. But this one right here, he's he's looking hard and he wants to find it quick. It's a big, big game right here. And I say grandpa to Dan Worth and the pitching coach uh, affectionately. All the pitching coaches have their little brood. Ryan Zimmerman hit it hard the first time up. Lined out to Granderson in center field. Escobar at first and one out. And that slider has been all over the place. It's been flat too. So looks like he's trying to grow a little food man too. Well, if this night doesn't go well, he might well shave it after the game. Slide to the misses, two and one. And in a funny game, huh? He's only had this is his 20th start. He's really had only four bad starts, off starts. The Cubs beat him up twice, mm -hmm. ironically. Washington beat him up once. So he's been the most consistent pitcher. Yeah, it was after that second Cubs start that he really kicked it in gear and been going for two months. Shot up the middle past Flores. And a base hit for Zimmerman. So Zimmerman scolded the ball twice. This time gets a positive result. And the Nats have two men on. Fifth hit. Had to come with the fastball, Gary. If you don't get the breaking ball over as a hitter, you recognize that. And you lay off the bad one. And usually when they're throwing a bad one, it's not as sharp a break. And there's Dan Worth and finally going to go out and have a little chat. Uh, when a pitcher doesn't have it, Gary, he's either missing in the dirt or he's missing upstairs. It doesn't have the sharpness, so you can track it. So when it's a ball as a hitter, it's easier to take. And then you get ahead, and then he's got to come with a fastball. And that was the case right there with Zimmerman. Second time in three innings that Dan Worth and his trek down there to try and help DeGrom figure things out. It's not been often that Dan is at. Uh, Visit Jacob early in starts. Now Jason Worth, who walked his first time up, bats with two on and one out. Escobar at second, Zimmerman at first. And that's now with five hits, all singles against DeGrom. He's walked one and struck out two. Just Worth missed. Takes the fastball just off the plate. Sixty pitches already with one out in the third for DeGrom. Fly ball to right, Kelly Johnson measuring it. Tagging it second is Escobar. And he takes third. Two out. I agree right there. He went through two fastballs, and I just think you gotta take your chances. Throw locating fa located fastballs, try to get a rhythm. The ball ran in on worth. Got by him in on his hands enough. But try to find your rhythm to by throwing that fastball and locating, then maybe the breaking stuff will come later. Sooner the better, obviously. Well, Ian Desmond had the big two out hit in the first inning with the bases loaded. He broke his back, but got it up the middle to drive in two runs. Now he's up with two out again with runners at first and third. Ground picks off the corner, nothing and one. Four straight fastballs. Desmond started the night for the season, hitting 138 with runners in scoring position. So that was a big hit for him. Over the last couple of weeks, that Desmond's bat has come around at all. 
Flies this one toward the right field line. Johnson near that sidewall, but it's in the crowd. So he's going to his fastball. Six straight, seven straight. No, six. Excuse me. That's the way to find your rhythm. He's keeping it down, Gary. This has got too much play right down the middle. Oh, if it's if it was so, so easy, it's not. One and two to Desmond. Another fastball, another foul ball. Ian Desmond, the last remnant of the Montreal Expos. Drafted by the Expos in their last season, 2004, before they moved to Washington for the 05 season. One, two. Fouls it off. And then their first season in Washington, their first round draft pick was Ryan Zimmerman, who made it to the big leagues that same year in 2005. And they made Zimmerman their, uh, their, their poster boy, so to speak, but he just, and rightly so, he's a heck of a player, but he just can't stay on the field. Well, he's been there, David Wright. Exactly. Probably their career arc has become eerily similar. 1 2 coming off the corner. 2 and 2. A lot of pitches, Gary. Wow, 67. A lot of long turns at bat. Escobar had a nine pitch at bat to start this inning. Seventh pitch coming to Desmond. And he waits to wear that fastball to stay in there. They're making met. I have not seen. There's the pitches by inning, and we're not through the third right now. I have never seen a lineup make met pitches work like this. Again, the 2 2 to Desmond. Got him looking. Desmond down on the fastball. Third strike after DeGrom, and he works through difficulty in the third. Still 2 0 Washington. Go to the bottom of the third. The Nats with a 2 0 lead. Jacob DeGrom will lead off of the Mets and standing by with a couple of ex Mets is Steve Gelb. Steve? Gary here with Anthony Young and Ron Swoboda. They're here for a Mets fantasy camp reunion, which is going to be tomorrow night. But we have a chance to catch up with them tonight. And first of all, guys, what have you been up to recently? What are you doing right now? Well, I'm back home in Houston. I run a baseball facility where I do private pitching lessons and coach travel baseball. 
and it's going pretty good right now. It's got to be like coming up in the winter right now compared to how hot it is in Houston. Oh, my God, it's hot out there. It was like 103 yesterday, and humidity, you just stand outside and you're in a ball of sweat, so it's very hot. And, Ron, you're in New Orleans right now. You're, you're doing uh, color commentary for the Marlins AAA team, right? That's right, and we get AY's weather the next day. But, yeah, I, I, the, the uh, Marlins AAA team, the Zephyrs are there, and I'm, I'm just loving the idea that at my age and at this point in time I can do AAA baseball, which I really enjoy. Guys, we, uh, we will get to this fantasy camp in just a second, but last night I know both of you saw the scene here at City Field with Wilmer Flores, the storybook ending. What were your thoughts when you see that ball go over the fence? It was a great feeling for me. I'm just happy, you know, I played for Terry Collins, and I'm just happy he got the team rolling and doing pretty good right now. Ron? And you know what? I think I think Flores feeling that love is going to change him as a kid. He knows this this place got around him and got with him, and, and he responded in, in an incredible way. And, Ron, you were a part of the Miracle Mets. I mean, you've been a part of some pretty exciting moments with this franchise. Does that one rank? Obviously, it's not a World Series. It's not up there. But where does that rank in terms of moments that you've seen? Look, this team is in it, okay? It's on, and this Met team is in it. And for him to help win that game that could have gone the other way, besides, you got to love a guy wearing number four. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this fantasy camp, the reunion again tomorrow night. Uh, for people that don't know what the Mets fantasy camp is, why don't you explain what you guys do down in, uh, in Florida in the winter? But we have a, a coaching staff of all the uh, ex ball players come down and we coach coaches to some of the older guys. There's a lot of guys, but and they come down there and they try to play the game of baseball. And like I tell them, y'all are the guys that be in the stands talking about us and look how y'all playing. But, you know, it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of friends. And, I'm, you know, I've been doing it for almost 10 years now, if not 10 years. And I just I, I met a lot of friends and keep in touch with them. And it's the ball. Ronnie says they, they try to play the game. How, how good are some of these guys? Some of these guys can. I had a 70-year-old guy, Joe, uh, Joe Abruzzo, uh, facing a 30-year-old guy that could throw a little bit a couple years back. He had a walk-off, you know, a double. And it was the best moment I ever had at camp. So you can see, you can you can have moments like that. And these guys, their 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 enthusiasm is so infectious. We just have a great time. And if you want to be a part of it, it's in January down in Florida. Go to Mets.com/slash/fantasycamp. Guys, back to you. Two of the uh, more interesting personalities in Mets history. Of course, Rocky was, um, you know, it was part of one of the the seminal moments yes. in Mets history with the catch he made in Game Four against the Orioles in '69. He doesn't make that play. That goes to the wall. It's big trouble. I was off the bat of Brooks Robinson. It was, uh, it was for, yeah, and it was uh, the receiver on the mound right. in the ninth inning. Oh. Ruben Tejada takes the strike, and of course Anthony Young is best known for his 27-game losing streak in the early 90s. But to me, what characterized Ay was that he always kept a positive attitude even through. A record breaking streak. Just to how to throws him out. And it, it's had us thrown out by Red Dawn. And in many ways, you know, you think about what Wilmer Flores went through the last few days and how he was able to, you know, rise to the occasion. It almost reminds you a little bit of a guy who dealt with adversity as well as Anthony Young did. Here's Curtis Granderson. He grounded out his first time up. Curtis will be playing very well, hitting extremely well, doing a terrific job of late. Second time through the batting order for Joe Ross has yet to allow a base hit. And the base runner was a leadoff walk to Duda in the second. That's were down 2 0 before they ever came to bat in this game. Hank Granderson pulls it down to first. Zimmerman to the bag, and the side retired. So Ross gets a 1 2 3 inning. We're through three with the Nats up 2 0.
Sunday will Geno Smith keep his starting quarterback job and will the defense be able to overcome the suspension of their Pro Bowl lineman. The crew weighs in on all the questions surrounding Jets training camp with the latest straight from Florham Park on Jets Nation inside camp Sunday at 7 only on SNY. Wilson Ramos leads off in the top of the fourth grounds one behind the back foul. And that gives us a chance to show tonight's T-Mobile data strong fan photo of the game. Oh, that is just so sweet. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag SNY data strong fan, and you can see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Maggie, you might know, is one of the astute observers of the game. Writes very pointedly about baseball. To the Ramos, who had a comebacker his first time up. Ramos, Taylor, and Ross for the Nats in the fourth. And a hard working night for DeGrom. I'll say. Well, both teams had to dip heavily into their bullpens last night, even though Matt Harvey went seven and two thirds. Clipper, Familia, Robles, Carlos Torres all worked last night, so. Last thing the Mets need is an early exit tonight for DeGrom. Third ball bounced to third, backing off Murphy has a long throw to make against the slow footed Ramos, and he gets him by a stride. One out. Well, know your base runners, and Murph does a good job for you. Slow runner, you can play back, get the long hop. Wise choice. Get that foot out of the way there, Lucas. I don't want you breaking an ankle. There's Michael Taylor, who has struck out in each of his last five at bats. Let's see now, Steve Gelps could have asked Ron Swoboda about that. Lucky well, struck out five times in a game. He did. He did. He also was the star of one of the great strikeout games of all time. And Steve Carlton set the record and struck out 19 and lost. So Bode hit two two run homers and beat him. That was in 1969. Popped up and foul ground, and that'll make it into the seats. Can't say I care for this Washington uniform. The softball top with the W. The curly W. Pretty hideous. Do you like the blue caps with the red bill? Not particularly. So it's just a clean sweep for you. No, I don't, I don't care. Hats. I don't care for the uniform. But you do like the camo on Wilson Ramos's uh, shin guard. Yes. Oh, Taylor boy. down on strikes again. So he now has struck out six consecutive at bats. Wow. That's four on the night now for DeGrom. Put a watch on him tonight. Just a fastball up and in. For Michael Taylor, that's now 290 at bats this year, 100 strikeouts. Here's Joe Ross. Grounded out to short his first time up. Ross one for 14 in his big league career. Brother well, Tyson's a pretty good hitter for a pitcher. A hundred strikeouts in two hundred and ninety. And 
again. A big struggle. Just has nothing tonight that's working particularly well. And now goes away with the fastball and runs the count full to the opposing pitcher. I love the way he's composing himself here, trying to find it. Lost lifts one to center. Granderson hadn't played perfectly. And that retires the side. No 85 pitches through four innings, but DeGrom able to get the side one, two, three. Out of the bottom of the fourth, we go two nothing that. The Pirates stay after the game for a special post-game concert featuring three-time platinum R&B artist Neo. The post-game concert is included in the price of your ticket, and it's all presented by Pepsi. Purchase tickets online at Mets.com/concerts. Neo, not to be confused with Nene. Better not. Well, is the old the wizard? I guess we'll have to wait to the concert to find out. Daniel Murphy leads off in the home fourth inning. Joe Ross is yet to allow a hit. Murphy grounds mm. one, and Zimmerman with a nice backhand wow. pickup and gets the out. Well, he made a heck of a play. Really, it's the opposite corner. He's used playing third base, so he's an infielder. That's a beautiful play. What he didn't realize is he had time to set himself and make a throw to the pitcher, but he made a perfect throw anyway. So that's just a real fine play. Well, it's interesting in this series watching Zimmerman go from one corner to the other, and Jason Worth adjust going from right field to left field. Two guys who have to play mirror images of their old position. Here's Yuena Cespedes for his second at bat, grounded out to short in his first Met plate appearance. Cespedes came over amongst the leaders in the American leagues in RBIs, 10th, in doubles, 3rd, in hits, 7th, in extra base hits, 5th. In fact, there are the extra base hit leaders among outfielders in the majors, and only Harper and Trout have more than Cespedes. Presented by DraftKings, play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Enter promo code NYM for free entry. Cespedes ground 
Sends one to the left side. Escobar with the spinorama right on target. So it's been running hard now by half a stride for the second out. Another nice play defensively by the Nationals, both at each corner here. Escobar to his left. Beautiful play. Good range. So Cespedes is running that ball out hard. Terry Collins met with Joannis before the game today. And the one thing Cespedes told him was, don't worry about me. Put me in the lineup every day. Good. And uh, you know that's a great luxury to have and you know it also helps when a guy like Cespedes has spent a year around Miguel Cabrera and I know Cabrera has been hurt for part of this season but another guy he plays every day uses the whole field and is a great role model for how to keep yourself in the lineup all the time although now he's hurt one and one to do that. Cespedes is now 29 years old in his fourth big league season. Dude has been the only Met base runner tonight. He hits this one deep to center field. Taylor goes back, takes a look, and that's long gone. The Mets' first hit of the night is a tape measure drive off the bat of Lucas Duda. Seven home runs in his last seven games, 19 for the year. And it cuts the Nats' lead to 2 to 1. Boy, is that nice to see. Starting to make regular and impressive deep contact. But his home runs have been coming gap to right center center, Gary. That's a good sign that he's letting the ball get deeper. Not pulling, over pulling. And dude, there's not a ballpark in, in the bit in the league that can hold Lucas. Oh, that guy took a tumble. That's the second one on this homestand that Lucas has hit into that section of seats in the center field where you almost never. See home runs. He is that kind of strong. This guy is right for the picking. Ross, I'm talking about. He's making a lot of fat pitches. Under the second home run, Ross has given up in the major leagues. Flores hit one of the fence and left his first time up. And a slider as he was fishing, one and two. And that's home run means $2,000 for an NYC community partner, courtesy of City. And now Lucas can go watch it on tape. Well, Lucas knows that he's waiting a little bit longer now. Not in front so much. The only other homer Joe Ross had given up in the major leagues was to Neil Walker of the Pirates. And now Duda has taken him deep in emphatic fashion. to Flores and he taps it weakly to Rendon and that retires the side but the Mets got on the board as Duda hits one well over 430 feet two to one Nats after four.
offense, you ain't a suspect as brings to the table for the Mets. But don't forget his arm, which is a major weapon. Well, that's a bit of a rainbow, but it's right on the money. And watch this recovery after a missed play on the carom. Third time around the batting order for Jacob DeGrom as we go to the fifth. Cespedes is yet to have a chance in left field. Anthony Rendon has fly deep to center and struck out. Yeah, so the Mets are hanging around. Tight it's ball up, game. It's up to DeGrom to try and have a quick inning here and keep himself around beyond five innings. He has not gone less than five innings in a start this season. And he just missed with that breaking ball. One and two. Lucas Dudas home run, getting the Mets back within a run after the Nats got two off to Grom in the first. And Rendon slaps one down to Duda. One out. By the way, uh, the, uh, the Ross family might have a little bone to pick with Lucas Duda. That's uh, two Ross brothers that Lucas has homered off in the last four days. Lucas, of course, SC, too, with back 10. Well, that's right, and the uh, Ross brothers are from uh, Berkeley. From Berkeley. That's right. Tyson went to Berkeley and yes. uh, Joe came out of high school but was born in Berkeley. So there you go. It's a Pac-10 thing. 12. Sorry. Yeah, well, I remember the Pac-8. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know Escobar. You know what that means? <laughs> yes. It means you're old. <laughs> that means there was no Arizona and no Arizona State in the Pac-8. Escobar two for two. And DeGrom finds that outside corner. Which is made elusive and Escobar moaning about it to Jordan Baker, the home plate umpire. A little tapper. DeGrom knocks it down, has plenty of time. Two out. Boy, he's one out away from a fast inning and a much needed one, Garrett. All of a sudden, Jake is retiring seven in a row. So it's a base hit by Zimmerman in the third, but he's got to get through Bryce Harper to finish off this top of the fifth. Big booze for Harper. I said this earlier this year. He kind of sets himself up to be that hated rival. Actions, some of his quotes, and also, so far this year, he's been the best player in the league, which adds to it. Ooh, that got away. Right between the legs of home plate umpire Jordan Baker. The ball meant to be away. To kind of ran, didn't it? Single to right, scored a run in the first. They fell out to the first baseman in the third. And that was a pitch to hit right there. He had a good cut at that, Garrett. Zero would be next. Well, Harper, before his 0 for 5 last night, had reached base safely in 26 straight games and in 45 straight road games. That came to an end. That's now he's on base for the second time tonight. Nice hitting. He is, you throw him downstairs, you throw at your own peril. That's just good hitting right there, going the other way with that pitch. Harper started the night third in the league in batting, first in home runs, third in RBIs. It's been 78 years since a National League player won a Triple Crown. 1937, Joe Medwick with the Cardinals. And since then, there have been 18 National League players who have been in the top three in each category entering August, but none of them has been able to seal the deal. The last to enter August in the top three in all three Triple Crown categories was Joey Votto five years ago. And you see all those most recent guys who didn't quite match Ducky Medwick. 
Zimmerman takes a knee high strike. One and high straight. One on one. Zimmerman has hit the ball hard twice tonight. Lined out to center and then scalded it on up the middle for a base hit. This is two and one. 1937, that's a long time ago. Yes. You would think that somebody would have come along and dominated the National League. I mean, it's been done several times in the American League. Mickey Mantle, Frank Robinson, Miguel Cabrera, Carl Stremski. Two and two to Zimmerman. And Joe Medwick was a notorious bad ball hitter. Front foot hitter and a bad ball hitter. Saying he wasn't big on on base percentage. He was a hacker. <laughs> Harvard missed a step off the bag. Hasn't been doing much base stealing this year, just four in eight tries. Joe Medwick, of course, I think most of the fans that have listened over the years, uh, was the minor league hitting instructor for the Cardinals when I was coming up in the farm system. Rob's 100th pitch. And Superman will make him throw another here in the fifth. Well, the Ramas do a turn bat in the bottom of the fifth inning, so it might be five and out for him tonight. Let's we'll see how Terry Collins decides to play it, whether he'd give him another rank at over 100 pitches. Of course, he's got to get through this one. 2 2. Got him! Side retire. Five strikeouts for Jacob DeGrom through five laborious innings. Halfway through, 2 1 Nets. Slow motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. You notice how he folks he kind of was affected on his deeper lower voice. Billy Johnson leads off in the home fifth. Well, you saw Jacob DeGrom there with a helmet on. Eric Campbell also has a helmet on in the Mets dugout. DeGrom do a third here in the bottom of the fifth. Johnson flat out to left his first time up. Normally you would never consider batting for DeGrom in the fifth inning as Johnson bangs off the middle for the Mets second hit of the night. So with DeGrom at 101 pitches certainly that is an option and Carlos Torres is up in the bullpen sporting his new number 72. The end up is 52 for you and Cespedes. So the Mets get the tying run aboard with nobody out. 
Darno will come to bat, and for the moment, DeGrom is out on deck. Travis into a fielder's choice for his first time up. 0 for 5 now since coming off the disabled left. Chases the slider, nothing in one. By the way, you know the hottest team in the National League East is since the All-Star break. Philly, the Phillies, 11 and 2 since the break, and they lead the Braves 7-2 in the fifth inning tonight. Who would have figured? Who is managing that club now? Pete McCann. That's right. Number two to Darno. Texas Ranger. They traded one of their prime relievers as well in that deal. Jake Diekman went to Texas. And they traded their closer, Jonathan Papelbon, to the Nats. They now have Ken Giles closing. 0 2 coming. And Darno chases a slider out of the strike zone. Strikeout number three for Ross, the first out of the inning. Well, he chased two bad sliders here. So a little rush showing on Darno in his first couple of games back. And DeGrom will stay in. Do you bet? Escobar thinks so, and I believe he, he was he would be correct in his judgment here. He might give him one pitch to swing at. DeGrom had a long turn at bat and was caught looking his first time up. But he is squaring and bunting foul into the screen. Jake has eight hits this year and three sacrifices. He's driven in two runs. Have such a nice hitting pitching staff that hits well, uh, starting rotation. They're all athletes. Harvey handles the bat well. DeGrom can hit. Syndergaard can hit. Nice. Nice can hit. And Cologne, yes. you make a mistake, he'll get you. Best hitting pitcher is probably on the DL right now. Steven Matz. Gets it down nicely. Ross will have to go to first with it. One to three on the sacrifice, moving Johnson to second. Tonight's Verizon trivia question Who was the first Mets pitcher to collect a pinch hit? I know this one. I was there. He was in Montreal in the early 90s. I believe it was on this date, believe it or not. Was it? Okay. But I don't know who I have no idea. Well, I'm not going to give it away. Pretty straight up on that <laughs> defense. They haven't changed much of their of their outfield defense. They're pretty much stationary out there. Tying run at second, Kelly Johnson, first at bat for the Mets with a runner in scoring position tonight, goes to Ruben Tejada. He grounded out his first time up. Ruben batting ninth in the order tonight. Takes a fastball for a strike. Very shallow outfield, and I agree with Tahada. You're just trying to if you give up a double here, so what? But a base hit, you got a chance to throw a runner out. It takes inside. would be next. Mets have had just two hits tonight due to Homer to the fourth. Johnson single to lead off this fifth. One and two to Tejada. Up and in. That's they got Ruben the first at bat. He grounded out to second base. Torres is not sitting down. I wonder what that means. Rob took the turn at bat. Is he going to go back to the mound?
One two coming. And Tejada chases the slider for strike three. So Ross able to work around the leadoff hit. He's got four strikeouts for the night. And DeGrom's coming back out for the sixth. Still two to one now. Jacob DeGrom back to the mound for the top of the sixth. The 101 pitches deep. Jason Worth fouls off the first offering. Worth is walked and flying to right 0 for 1. Worth, Desmond, and Ramos up for the Nats in the sixth. DeGrom's season high pitch count is 115. He did that against the Cubs July 2nd. Last year threw as many as 122 in a start against the Pirates. That's what he's working against tonight as he starts the sixth inning over 100 pitches. Gave up two runs in the first, none since. Still has not been particularly sharp, but has been able to impose his will enough to keep this game close. Well, the Mets have an off day on Thursday in between that Miami. And Tampa road trip, uh, so it will give Duram an extra day. So he may go, he may go seven, picking up hold to hold the fourth. It's a generous call there for a second strike on Worth. Jacob has walked one, struck out five, given up six hits, all singles. That's bullpen staying busy. And Worth fouls it back, and this is what. Where you run into trouble, these Nats have had such long turns at bat last night and particularly tonight against DeGrom. We're at the, the 13 pitch at bat against Clippard last night. Bounces one for Tejada, nice easy hop. One out. Let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams has a game break brought to you by Honda. Runs now for Rizzo. Cubs came into the day one game behind the Giants for the second wild card spot. Ian Desmond takes a strike. Desmond has the two RBIs for Washington. A broken back, bases loaded single that just snuck through the middle with two out of the first. Then they go to Miami. And the, uh, the Marlins are 
really struggled yes. right now. They've lost six or seven. They're down tonight to San Diego, five two in the sixth. Stanton on the DL, Ozuna in the minor leagues. They traded away a couple of starting pitchers, Latos and Harry. Traded away a couple of relievers, and Dyson and Cishek. That's been down on strikes. Nope, foul tip. That's just got a piece of it. Stay alive. So it's a kind of a decimated crew that the Marlins are running out there right now. And part of what after this series is over for the Mets will be the easiest schedule in terms of winning percentage of any team in the majors. Now Desmond is out on strikes. Second time the charm. As DeGrom picks up his sixth of the night. Sinking change. So two out of nobody on that Wilson Ramos. Ramos is over two. This has been a battle for DeGrom showing a lot of grit, Gary. The uh, the Nats were acting and Ramos was looking back to the dugout as though that was a challengeable play. It's not a foul tip. He's not a play you can challenge. And I think Matt Williams knew that. He never moved. And a call strike to Ramos. He's twice grounded out. Last two innings have been much better for DeGrom. And like I said, a real gritty effort here. Giving up two runs in the first inning and just struggling and throwing up four straight goose eggs and on the verge of five straight goose eggs and keeping his ball club in the in the game. This will be a season high 116th pitch. Lunges for it and fouls it off. Our statistician Dave Freed tells us that eight times tonight the Nats have added bats of six pitches or more. Yep. And that has contributed to the high pitch count. Carlos Torres ready to go if needed. Rob trying to put the finishing touches on this top of the sixth. And he gets Ramos. Great changeup for DeGrom to finish off his night. His seventh strikeout. It didn't start well. But DeGrom finishes with a quality start. Now the Mets will try and get him some offense. Down 2-1 of the sixth. Tickets to Jets training camp in Florida Park. Don't miss your chance to get front row seats to all the competition and position battles as the Jets gear up for their 2015 season. Visit Facebook.com/sny and enter today. 
And Jacob DeGrom's work is done. 117 pitches a season high over six innings. Not easy, but got the job done to the tune of just two runs. It's always a sign of a good pitcher where he doesn't have command, doesn't have his good stuff. He's only given up two runs. Third time around the order for Joe Ross, and he gets the slider in for a strike to Curtis Granderson. Granderson's been up twice, grounded out to the right side both times. Granderson, Murphy, and Cespedes for the Mets in the sixth. That's only one coming on Lucas Duda's home run in the fourth. And Granderson takes a fastball strike, 0 2. Getting ready to pitch the seventh inning for New York. Ross has struck out four tonight. This is with the back door, one and two. We talked about Ross and his want to strikeout ratio in a very early stage of his career. He's now walked four and struck out 38. And he now strikes out Granderson to extend that. It's kind of in keeping with what the Nats have done as a staff. The Nats coming into the night have a 3.68 strikeout to walk ratio, which, if it holds, will be a major league record for any season. Let's check in with Steve Gelbs' his report tonight. It's brought to you by StubHub. Steve? Certainly a lot of excitement today surrounding the guy on deck, Yoana Cespedes, making his Mets debut tonight. But perhaps there was no more excited person than Kelly Johnson in that clubhouse. Johnson, for a brief time, played with Cespedes in Boston. And he said that after the two parted ways, he always wanted to play with Cespedes again. And there were a couple of reasons why that was the case. First of all, what Cespedes is able to do on the field. Johnson said he is the guy you want up in a big spot. As Murphy grounds out, but he said Cespedes, he has that that knack, that ability in big spots to elevate his game, to focus up. And he said that's a rare thing. You're not going to see a guy like Cespedes swinging a bad pitch in a big situation. There's a reason why he's got 61 RBIs, which is ahead of Bryce Harper, who's having an otherworldly year this year. But also the personal side of things. Said Cespedes is easygoing, quiet, but also cares a lot about developing relationships with his teammates. Said that he picked up golf so that he could play with his teammates. And while in Boston, it was a clubhouse with a lot of guys playing guitars, Cespedes learned how to play the guitar as well. Interesting. That's, that's going a long way right there. And Ross is throwing most of the sliders tonight. Started him off with the fastball that time. Keeping it away from Cespedes. 18 home runs this year, and he's got power to wall field. It's leaned back for the first time, one and one. Is allowed just two hits through five and two thirds. So they're getting them with that slider. They're going to throw him that slider. He's out in front. Another one. Why not? There you hung it right there, and he's out in front. So it's a little bit nerves right now for Sessimidis. Just out in front. He waits. See him have to reach and let go with one hand. He keeps it fair. And he strikes him out with a slider to end the inning. 
Joe Ross with his sixth strikeout of the night. On to the seventh we go. Mets go to the pen down 2-1. On the pitch in the seventh inning. Well, he has his last three outings, Gary, beginning in what Washington series where he got the loss. He's given up seven earn, uh, seven earned runs on seven hits and two and a third innings. He got off to such a wonderful start, but he's hit a little roadblock here. As has Michael Taylor, <laughs> who has struck out in each of his last six at bats, including twice tonight against Jacob DeGrom, whose work is done after six innings. Taylor struck out his last four at bats last night, and his first two tonight. And he swings through the fastball by Parnell. Just for reference, the major league record for consecutive strikeouts for a non pitcher is 10. Rick Ankeel said that with the Astros two years ago. And trying to butt his way on. That's the way to break the strikeout streak, but Duda comes off the bag but stayed on long oh. enough, and they get Taylor, and we'll see if the Nats decide to challenge that. Matt Williams comes up to the top step. Dude had to reach wide for Murphy's throw. Did he stay on? I believe he did. Yeah. First base umpire Andy Fletcher looks like he made a good call. Yes, he did. And Matt Williams says no challenge. Oh, he no, he wants oh, a challenge. Did he say challenge? I, th yeah. I thought he waved it off. He said headset. Sorry. Okay. Well, last night the Mets challenged on what did not look like a hit batsman and did not get satisfaction. Not sure what Matt's replay coordinator saw, but apparently enough doubt in his mind to challenge the call and see if he can get Taylor an infield hit. Play and review brought to you by Mazda Driving Matters. And it would be key if they get it. But boy, every angle we've seen so far seems to indicate that Lucas stayed on the back. Here's the angle. There's no way that gets overturned. No way. Based on that. And it took them about 10 seconds to look at it and decide that the call stands. It's probably about the worst challenge we've seen. <laughs> I mean, they had no chance to win that. Yep. So they lose their challenge for the rest of the night. Nice play by Murphy on the bunt. So Taylor. Fails to strike out, but also fails to reach base. So one out now. Joe Ross is grounded out and flied out. Officially 39 seconds on the review. So a nice play by Daniel Murphy. Mm -hmm. 
That's of a lot of people playing in places they were not intended to play when the year began. When you look around the field, Lucas Duda and Travis Darno are playing the positions that they were slotted to on opening day. Tejada was supposed to be on the bench. Flores was supposed to be at short. Duda is where he's supposed to be. Cespedes wasn't here. Granderson was supposed to be in right. Kelly Johnson wasn't here. Murphy was supposed to be at second. So things change. I've got a feeling though that based on what Terry said tonight about Cespedes, that we're going to see him in center field before. I do too. And the fact that Cespedes loves playing center. Oh, broken bat flare gets past Parnell. Tough play for Tejada. And Ross beats it out. So a fortunate hit for the pitcher Joe Ross. And Terry's going to look at this. He's at he's at the second step. I think he said no. They must have looked real quick. Tejada does all he can do. Broken bat. He beat it. A little flare. <laughs> So the Nationals have their seventh hit of the night, the first against Parnell. Nice hustle by Ross. Second career hit for Joe Ross. So he'll have to run the bases now here in the seventh. See if that takes any steam out of him. He's had a terrific night on the mound. He's 22 years old. That'll get tired. Huh? Anthony Rendon is 0 for 3 tonight. Staying for the fireworks? Only if you do. <laughs> My daughter is here tonight. She's lobbying for me to stay for oh, the fireworks. Oh, is she? I already told her. And yet? Probably not. Tomorrow's an off day for us. I want to get home and go to bed early. I can get up and enjoy the day. My daughter's in town. I'm going to Miami tomorrow. Fly ball deep left field back toward the corner goes Cespedes onto the track and he runs it down. Cespedes got a great jump on that fly ball off the bat of Rendon and that's the second out of the inning. Just got in enough on Rendon and Cespedes a long way to run here Gary. Made it look easy. Had it all the way. He's a good outfielder with a great arm. So two out. Ross still at first. Now you know Escobar, who's two for three tonight. He got it all started against DeGrom in the first inning with a soft single to right. Escobar and Harper singled. Worth walked with two out, and then Desmond singled up the middle to drive in two runs, and that's all DeGrom gave up in six innings. Despite a whole host of trouble. Parnell's curveball knocked down by Darno. What a know. It looks like this crowd is looks like a full house. Just ready to erupt. The Mets get anything going, it is gonna get loud. Situation a left hander. They had Jerry Blevins early in the season. Blevins has just now been cleared to throw after breaking his arm in April. Ooh, good cut. As we go to the seventh.
teams in the National League East, both of them sport great pitching. You expect close, low scoring games. Two to one, the Mets won at 12 last night. Two to one, the Nats lead in the seventh tonight. Lucas Duda's accounted for the only Met run with a home run in the fourth inning. Duda now has seven home runs in his last seven games, and in fact, his last seven hits are all home runs, which is a new Mets club record. Also, Robles up in the Mets bullpen. The old record was five home runs without any other hits. Bobby Bonilla did that in 92, Ike Davis in 2012, and now Duda, his last seven hits have all been home runs. Duda hits this one out to left field, pretty deep. Back goes Worth near the wall, and it's out of here! Lucas Duda with his second of the night to tie the game! For Duda, eight home runs in his last seven games, and Duda has been putting on a home run display on this homestand. He gets the Mets even in the seventh. He is finally waiting, Gare, and I said a long time ago, a good second half will make everybody forget about the first half. Now Flores takes ball one. This is a not a bad pitch, down and away. That's what Lucas needs to do. Needs to do. There's not a this ballpark can't hold him. So who would have thought a month ago, six weeks ago, that Duda has a shot for 30 home runs again? He well, does. We're less than two thirds of the way through the season. He's got 20 now, so he's on pace for better than 30. Unbelievable. And three of the eight home runs he's hit in the last seven games have come against the Ross brothers. Another two thousand dollars for an NYC community partner, courtesy of City. Flores takes a strike. Five multiple home run games already this season for Lucas. So that's better than half of his home runs have come in five games. He had the three home run game and four two home run games. Slowly hit to short for Desmond. And he throws out Flores with a wave. By the way, the last time a player hit home runs against brothers in a four day span or less, Adam Dunn homered against El Duque and Levon Hernandez. That's a good duo right there. What was that 2006? Of course, Lance Berkman in 2000 homered against the Bennis brothers in the same game. Against the Cardinals, against Andy and Allen. Wow. Kelly Johnson takes it low. Johnson has the only other hit besides Duda's two home runs for the Mets tonight. Single to center in the fifth inning. Well, Ross had allowed just one home run in his first five starts. Now he's given up two to one guy tonight. Johnson it's a deep to left back goes worth to the warning track and it's one hop to the wall Kelly Johnson with an opposite field double well it took the Met left handers a while to wake up a center ball pitcher taken the other way if you start pulling this uh, Ross and you're a left hand hitter you're playing into his and he went into his hands. You're going to get that ball away at his bread and butter. Take it the other way. Well done. That's going to be all for Joe Ross. Kelly Johnson's second hit of the night. Knocks Ross out of the box. Matt Williams had Casey Jansen ready. Opted to stick with Ross. He gives up a home run and a double here in the eighth. And Jansen will come on to relieve him in a 2-2 game. Called to the bullpen. Brought to you by Verizon. We'll be right back to City Field.
Jacob DeGrom held the fort after giving up two in the first. Joe Ross gave up two home runs to Lucas Duda. They're both out of the game now, and 33-year-old Casey Jansen is in. Former Toronto Blue Jay on the disabled list early this season. Rotator cuff. Lead run at second. Johnson with one out, and Travis Darno takes a cutter for a strike. Travis 0 for 2 tonight. Get into a fielder's choice and struck out against Ross. 0 for 6 off the disabled list. Want a rebay on deck to bat for Bobby Parnell. Jacob DeGrom now off the hook after Duda's second home run. Curveball fouled off. And Jansen's ahead 0 and 2. The veteran left hander Matt Thornton is up now in the Nats bullpen. Hasn't played much, only his 21st game, but those are his numbers with runners in scoring position this year. Just off the corner with a fastball, one and two. Lonson Robles ready to pitch the eighth inning for New York. Two from Jansen to Darno. Out slowly. Johnson will have to stay put. Desmond throws out Darno for the second out. So now two away. Go ahead run in scoring position and Juan Uribe will pinch hit. That's only have one left handed bat on the bench. That's Kirk Neuenheis. He's had a pinch nerve in his neck the last couple of days. So. It'll be Uribe in this spot against the right hander. Uribe started at third base last night with 0 for 2 with a couple of walks, 4 for 13 since joining the Mets. And he's going to be walked intentionally and they'll go instead after Ruben Tejada. I agree with this move 100%. Well, the one thing Matt Williams knows is that the Mets are not likely to bat for Tejada. So he's pretty confident that's the matchup he's going to get, and that's the matchup he wants. And it's the right matchup. And there's ball four, so Uribe is on. And it'll be left to Tejada. He came up with a runner in scoring position and two out his last at bat and struck out on a slider against Joe Ross. Now he's got two on and two out and facing Jansen for the first time. Kelly Johnson doubled. He's on second. Uribe intentionally walked. He's on first with two out. Mets tied the game here in the seventh on Lucas Duda's leadoff home run, his second of the night. Takes the cutter outside, ball one. Well, this is like a lefty against a lefty. Jansen needs to get Tahada out. Thornton will come in if he loses Tahada to face Granderson. And Ruben slaps it slowly down to first. Zimmerman makes the play to Jansen, and the Nats able to keep the game tied after Duda got it tied. Eight home runs in his last seven games. His last eight hits have all left the ballpark. Lucas Duda, 20 home run season. He's on a tear in the Mets' time.
8.08 p.m. and don't be a minute late. The first 15,000 fans will receive a Michael Kadire poster courtesy of Tops. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. Well, the Mets are going to make a, an infield realignment here. Daniel Murphy moves from third base to second base. Juan Uribe, who pinch hit, stays in the game at third. And Wilmer Flores moves from second base to shortstop. That will move the pitcher into the nine hole. And the Mets save one spot in the batting order by taking Tejada out as Hansel Robles comes in to pitch. I'm not quite sure I 100% understand this. If I would imagine if you're going to take Tejada out, then you would have to consider to pinch hit for. But I would imagine that means Neuenheis is not available. Correct. And then you got Pawecki you can't use he's your only backup right. catcher yeah, so it's either that. Campbell or Lagaris right. and Lagaris has been in really struggling. Well by pushing the pitcher one spot further down in the order Terry tries to ensure that he can get two innings if necessary out of Robles and that makes you wonder who's not available in that Mets bullpen. As Bryce Harper leads off in the eighth inning of the tie game and takes outside ball one. Well. You could st you should still get two out of Robles even if you don't flip flop and you've taken away a little bit of your defense on the infield. Well here's the thing Robles is pitching for the fourth straight day. He's Familia's pitched the last two days. Clippers pitched the last two days and Clipper threw a lot of pitches yesterday. Harper takes outside two and out. I'm curious if this game goes long and there's a big needed out. Remember that there's only one left hand hitter in this lineup. And that's Harper. Mm -hmm. So maybe bring Clipper in just for the one guy. Well, Clipper had a, a really tough outing last time. Well, a lot of pitches, but good strike right there. Well, I don't know who else in that bullpen you trust to get a left-hand hitter. Out. Unless you're gonna, you know, you don't have go to, to your big guys. You don't have to worry about it right now. Drew Storen up in the Nats bullpen, ready to pitch in the bottom of the eighth. Once you get past Harper, the rest are all right-hand hitters. And Robles throws it by Harper, two and two. Robles looked very good yesterday. He struck out Harper in the eleventh inning. That's what led to Harper's ejection. He's got a rubber arm. He also made a great defensive play on a ball that was dribbled by Jason Worth up the third baseline. Zimmerman and Worth to follow Harper here in the end. Slap foul, an emergency hack by Harper to stay alive. That was an ugly hack. That's very similar to the hack that Tejada had last inning. One happy patron. Harper down on strikes. Robles blows him away. One down in the eighth. That's where Mets get him out. Up and away. And that's pounding right there all day long. Until he can prove he can hit it. One out now Ryan Zimmerman one for three on the night has hit two balls hard lined out the center single to center against the Grum who finally struck him out in the fifth. I think home plate umpire Jordan Baker has done a nice job back there tonight. Youngest member of this four man crew. Behind on Zimmerman 2 0, as he was behind on Harper 2 0. Rob went six, allowed two runs, six hits. Parnell pitched a scoreless seventh. And now Robles in the eighth. Zimmerman swinging, flies it out to center field. Granderson's there. Two out. Let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams has another game break brought to you by Ford. Giants playing in Texas for the first time since the 
2010 World Series. Rangers beat Madison Bumgarner last night. Robles has retired the first two here in the top of the eighth. Now Jason Worth is over two and a walk. The Nats have seven hits. The Mets have four. But all seven Washington hits have been singles, and the Mets have gotten two home runs from Lucas Duda. Well, three straight hitters, Robles has fallen behind 2 0. He struck out Harper. Got Zimmerman to fly out on a 2 0 pitch. Now he's behind Worth 2 0. There's a strike. Got Thornton up for the third time in the Nationals' bullpen with Granderson and Murphy due to start the bottom of the eighth. Now Robles has gotten a lot of success with the high heat of this inning. He's fearless. I'll give you that. He's got a great arm. Throws hard. And he said it here four days in a row. He likes to pitch. And never in bigger games than he's been in the last two nights for the rookie right-hander. Two and two to Worth. Seven. He dialed it up a bit and Worth able to waste it away. Worth has been out for so long, he's just not right. He showed a little frustration there on that last swing. I thought how he felt it was a pitch. I should have hit. Just a couple of months with a broken wrist. Just his fifth game back. 2-2. Two -two. Struck him out. Top of the order coming up at the bottom of the eighth. Mets and Nats tied at two. with you on Monday night when the Mets open their series in Miami with Bartolo Colon looking to snap his dry spell on the mound against the Marlins coverage begins tomorrow night at six o'clock right here on SNY tomorrow night it'll be Noah Syndergaard against Jordan Zimmerman in the final game of this series that's hoping to be a game behind the Nats when that arrives Matt Thornton will pitch the bottom of the eighth for Washington. 
38 drew a left hander facing Curtis Granderson. And he gets the breaking ball in for a strike. Thornton was picked off a, up off of waivers from the Yankees last August. Jerry is familiar. Get ready for the ninth. Well, Thornton has always had success against Granderson. Curtis is just four for 28 against him. Murphy on deck and then Cespedes. So this will probably be a two batter outing for Thornton. But he misses low and in with the sinker, two and one. Joe Ross went six and a third, allowed two runs, four hits, the two home runs to Duda. Casey Jansen got two outs in the seventh, and now Thornton in the eighth. And Granderson smacks one on the right from base hit. Harper trying to cut it off. Gets to it on the warning track. Granderson heads for second. He's in safely with a leadoff double. Perfect. Well done, Curtis. Putting him off the line. Don't know why. He's been pulling. And an easy stand-up double. Now in a game of this importance, an important series, you've got to at least get the runner over here. Get 20th up. double in the air for Granderson. Do you butt with Murphy? No. Murphy's 0 for 3 tonight. Last two times up has hit the ball to the right side. That would work. Escobar in at third looking for a bunt. None coming, and Murphy fouls off the slider. Well, Uena Cespedes in his first game as a Met, standing on deck, might be in a position for some heroics. Escobar still on on the grass at third. And Murphy fouls off the fastball and two. So Aaron Barrett, who was very impressive last night, is up. And he's not ready. So if they get Murph out or Murph gets the runner over, they're going to walk Cespedes to pitch to Duda. You got to. Well, that's tough right now. The way Lucas is going. One and two to Murphy. Lucas, two home runs tonight. Eight home runs in his last seven games. And one of those games last night, he didn't even start. Well, there so has been with the home run bat. Pitching coach Steve McCaddy talking it over with Matt Williams. One-two to Murphy. Good fight off pitch right there, Murph. Up and in, stayed in the at bat. Tough pitch. That's fought it off. Steve McCaddy pitching coach. They got up. They, they don't want it to deal with Cespedes. Murphy one for five in his career against Thornton. And he slaps one back to the mound. Granderson has to hold. Oh. A soft toss by Thornton. Oh. Balloons to Zimmerman and they get the out. Oh my word. Well Murph's trying to get him over. Just chased a bad one. Look at this. Hand grenade. Well, we'll see how the Nats decide to play this. Now they got Felipe Rivero as their only left-hander, and he threw a lot of pitches last night. Well, McCabe's coming out, not Matt Williams, so clearly they're not taking Thornton out of the game. Right. So the question is, do you walk Cespedes intentionally, or do you try and pitch around him, tease him, try to get him to swing at a bad pitch? He has been a little over anxious tonight in his Mets debut and has swung at a number of pitches out of the strike zone. Thornton has faced Cespedes before. He's 0 for 2 against him. So there's not a whole body of work here. There's an element of surprise. I, I just think Duda's so hot right now. How do you walk a guy to pitch? He's a double play guy, too, now. If you get him hit a ground ball, yeah, they're going to walk him in tension. I cannot argue with this, Gary. I'm sorry. I don't care how hot Lucas is. So it's going to be Thornton against Duda, who's already hit two home runs tonight. And Duda is two for five in his career against Matt Thornton, which you know Matt Williams is completely aware of. Still, you got to go with percentages, Gary. 
Well, this is the second intentional walk in the last two innings issued by Matt Williams. The first one worked. They walked to Rebe to pitch to Tejada in the last inning, and Jansen was able to retire Tejada. If he gets Duda out, it sets the stage for Flores. Then they probably home. bring Barrett in to face him. Yep. But first they have to get through Duda, and that's a tough task right now. There's the intentional walk to Cespedes. And here comes the red hot Lucas Duda. Two ninety eight this year against left handers. Those numbers have come down from his hot early start. But he does have five homers against lefties. But right now. He is smacking home runs to every part of the ballpark. Use the opposite field. His two home runs tonight have come to center and to left. He only needs a base hit to give the Mets the lead. Granderson at second. Cespedes at first, one out. And Duda off the first pitch slider. Nothing at all. Boy, he's feeling frisky at the plate. He's feeling good. It's a heck of a cut, vicious cut. Infield. Pretty much straight up in the outfield. It's a flat slider. Good cut, Lucas. Thirty-eight-year-old Matt Thornton trying to find a way out of trouble in the eighth. Time has for eight home runs in his last seven games. Each of his last eight hits have been home runs. Homer Flores, last night's hero, on deck. And Duda Good eye. able to ignore that slider just off the plate, one and one. That shows you how good Lucas is sitting at the plate. That pitch he's been flailing at for how long in the first half of the season? Look at that. Didn't miss by that much, Garrett. And now he's taking, and now he's a. Got the count even instead of 0 and 2. One and two. Big rip. Three sliders in a row now from Thornton. Eight home runs in his last 20 at bats. <laughs> Just incredible. He's got 20 home runs for the year now. A single to the outfield would suffice here. One, two. Hit to left, chasing Worth back to the warning track. It's over his head. Granderson will score. Cespedes held at third. Lucas Duda with an RBI double on the Mets lead it in the eighth. Three to two. Good cut. Another slider just missed one and one. Slider swung on rip. There he goes the other way, Gary. I said use left field. High slider. Left field Lucas. Three extra base hits. Three RBIs tonight. The Mets lead it 3-2 in the bottom of the eighth. Granderson, he can halfway. He can score easily. Look at Cespedes fly, folks. He can run. Tuffle could have taken a chance, but with one out, no reason to. Thornton out, Barrett in. Mets have taken the lead in the bottom of the eighth. Pitching change. We'll be right back.
last night was one where Flores night tonight has belonged to Lucas Duda. Two big cuts for the first two strikes and then he goes up the middle no intent to hit a home run look at the level swing fully intent on going the other way good hitting now Aaron Barrett in to face Wilmer Flores base of uh, infield in with runners at second and third and Flores goes after the first pitch slider nothing at all oh this is a big run to get in right here you look at Barrett who threw really impressive last night two strong innings great curveball throws hard Got to get this insurance run in. Cespedes, who was walked intentionally in front of Duda on third, and Duda at second. Infield in. Flores 0 for 3 tonight. Grounded out against Barrett last night. Jerry is familiar. Without a save since the All Star break. In place to get one tonight. And Wilmer takes it at the knees for a strike. And it's 0 2. That had the knees. Borderline tough to take. Got to make contact here. On 0 with 2. Kelly Johnson on deck. Boy, Ramos did not get down, Gare, and the ball came up. Oh, boy. He hit him in the inside of the thigh. Otherwise, it's right through the thigh hole. Yes, sir. That's a big break. What electricity in this building tonight. Sellout crowd, 42,000 plus. Second largest crowd of the year. And they have been entertained by Lucas Duda's bat. 1-2 to Flores, and he strikes out on the breaking ball, and that's the second out. So Barrett gets a huge out, and now it's left to Kelly Johnson. We'll see if they pitch to him with first base open. We've got Darno on deck, who's been struggling in his two games off the disabled list. There comes McCaddy, and they're going to pitch to Kelly Johnson, but I think he's just out there to tell him, look, if you fall behind, make your pitches. This is the beauty of the National League here. Nobody throwing in that Nationals bullpen. So it's on Barrett to try and keep this a one run game. In the ninth inning, the Nationals will have six, seven, and eight in the order Desmond, Ramos, and Taylor with the pitcher spot due up fourth. So Ansel Robles did the heavy lifting in the top of the eighth, got through Harper, Zimmerman, and Worth, one, two, three with a couple of strikeouts. He's now pitcher of record on the long side. But what a big two out hit this could be for Kelly Johnson to try and bring in a couple of insurance runs. Kelly's already two for three in this game. Single to center in the fifth. Doubled to left in the seventh. And he takes the off speed pitch outside. I have a feeling here. Oh, sorry, here. There's the Verizon trivia question. Who was the first Mets pitcher to collect a pinch hit? It was David Cohn. Oh, I was gone. No wonder I didn't know that one. A year after you left. Was an old man. You weren't paying attention from Cleveland. Oh, I was very old. And you were in Cleveland. Maybe Thousand, old in a hurry. Oh, thousand dollar a month phone bills. Two and out of Johnson with Darnell on deck. And uh, they're pitching carefully to him, but Barrett found the corner that time. Two and one. They're staying away. Use left field. Which he already has effectively tonight. Now three and one. They're going to. He doesn't want anything to do with them. They're going to take their chances with Darno only because Darno is just off the DL. Well, they're not giving him intentional ball for no. Three and one to Kelly Johnson. And he popped it up. Playable for Escobar. That retires the side, but Lucas Duda's third RBI of the night gets the Mets the lead. Two home runs and now an RBI double. Familion to try and save it.
Lagares comes into play center field. Curtis Granderson moves to right. And Jerry's familiar, who got five outs last night, looks for his first save since the All-Star break. And Mets need it from him right here to take the first two games of this series. Familia coming in for the save. Every save this year means another opportunity to win prizes from Delta Airlines. Go to Mets.com slash Delta Dugout to sign up now. Desmond, Ramos, and Taylor, the three scheduled hitters for the Nationals. Lucas Duda driving in all three runs. Mets looking for a second straight one run victory over the team they're chasing. Desmond one for three tonight. Drove in the two Nationals runs with a bases loaded single against Jacob DeGrom in the first. DeGrom was able to hold the fourth for five innings after that. Parnell and Robles each contributed a scoreless inning as the Mets came back. And now Familia trying to seal the deal. 0 for three in save opportunities since the All Star break. And Desmond with a hack and a slider out of the strike zone, one and one. Probably one and zero, looking for a middle end, try to tie the ball game. The guy hits 20 home runs the last couple seasons. Familiar per pitching the third straight day. He had the blown save in the rain against the Padres Thursday, an inning and two thirds last night, and right back out there tonight. Desmond flies one out to right. Granderson is right there. One out. Now it's Wilson Ramos who has made a habit of thwarting men hopes. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Just 1 for 21 on the Nationals current road trip. The slider, nothing and one. And they got away with a few sliders last night. Which was a little sharper. Tonight. A little sharper out of the strike zone, but they're 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 chasing it. Michael Taylor on deck, pitcher spot behind him. No one to Ramos. Bounces that slider, a ball and a strike. He really hasn't thrown one for a strike yet. Yeah. Max Scherzer not pitching in this series. Second straight series against the Mets. Syndergaard goes to the mound tomorrow night. Hoping to be in a position for a sweep. One and one to Wilson Ramos. Sinker at 99. Skips in two and one. Fourth time this year that Familia pitches three straight days. So it's not novel territory for him. That's need very badly for Familia to get back on the beam. And Ramos grounds one to short. Flores with a long throw to make. Right on target, two down. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by City. This season, City Small Business Call Ups winner is Randolph Beer. Check them out at the City Field Outfield Concourse now through the remainder of the regular season. Learn more at Mets.com slash City. Nationals down to their final out. Michael Taylor has struck out twice. And then was thrown out trying to bunt his way on. Two out, nobody on. And a breaking ball in for a strike, nothing in one. Sell on crowd at City Field. Hoping Familia can seal the deal. Nothing in two. Good sinker. There it is. Where have you been hiding? Oh, two. He struck him out, and the ball game is over. Jerry 
He's familiar. Snaps his slump with his first save since the All-Star break. Lucas Duda with an enormous night with two home runs and the go-ahead double in the eighth. And the Mets have taken the first two from the Nats to get within a game of first place as they win tonight, three to two. Well, Gary, you said it all. Duda was Flores last night. Tonight it's Duda. Very gutty performance out of Degrom. Struggled early, fought his way through six tough innings. The bullpen again sparkling and familiar with his 28th save due to the two home runs. And folks, the race is on. Great work by Hansel Robles against the heart of the Nats order in the eighth. Striking out Harper, pitching a 1-2-3 inning. He winds up with the win as the Mets have taken the first two from the Nats and they're just a skinny game out of first place. Jacob DeGrom gave up two in the first, held the fourth from there, and the Mets win it 3-2. For every Mets, Mets win, the Mets Foundation is proud to contribute $2,500 to the Cats Women's Hospital and the Cats Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit NorthShoreLIJ.com slash KIWH. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $135,000. Mets 3, Nationals 2. Fireworks to come at City Field. Duda provided the fireworks tonight. More coming up.